I'd like to start with a big thank you to all the AOPS fans who visited us at Nationals, traded pins with us, and hooked me up with new t-shirts like this one from Team Puerto Rico. But I have to start with a special shout out to my most dedicated fan. Check him out right here. Yeah, that's right. I am signing his forehead with a Sharpie. Now, I did get permission from his parents first. Well, at least they said they were his parents. Ah, whatever. Wolfgang, this one's for you. Now, my first step when I start building my Math Counts Minis for the year is to pick out the problems. So I have to look at the test and pick out the problems. Now here's the test. Yeah, look at all those words. I thought this was a math contest, not an English contest. So we're going to start this year off with a very important skill. How to turn these words into math. Alright, let's see, we'll get rid of that. And here is our first problem. A word problem, of course. We have Kevin, Cindy, and Marcus. They have 1,020 widgets, whatever a widget is. Marcus has half as many as Cindy has, and Kevin has 219. We're going to try to figure out how many widgets Cindy has. Now, we want to turn these words into math, and math means equations. So when we turn all these words into equations, we will need variables. We'll have variables for Kevin, Cindy, and Marcus. Now, we could choose A, B, and C, but that would be confusing, because then C would stand for Marcus instead of Cindy. We like to choose variables that remind us what the variables mean. So we'll choose K for Kevin, C for Cindy, M for Marcus. And this first sentence is an equation. All these words just mean K plus C plus M is 1,020. And now we're ready to move on to the second sentence. Marcus has half the number of widgets Cindy has. Marcus is half Cindy. M is C over 2. And the next sentence, Kevin has 219 widgets. K is 219. And now we have an equation that we know how to handle. This is just a simple linear equation. We'll subtract 219 from both sides. That'll leave 801 over here. And I can combine C and C over 2, add those up, and we have 3C over 2. And now to get C all alone here, we multiply both sides by 2 thirds, and we have C is 2 thirds of 801. Now, a slick way to figure this out, to compute this, is just think of 801 as 810 minus 9. Because it's easy to take 2 thirds of 810, that's 540, and 2 thirds of 9 is 6. So this is just 540 minus 6, that's 534. And we're finished with this problem, on to the next one. Oh boy, that's a whole lot of words. Numerator, denominator, fractions. Ugh, nobody likes fractions. Well, at least it's clear what our variables are. Numerator, n denominator D. So let's see if we can turn this long first sentence into an equation. So the numerator of the fraction is increased by 6. Well that's just n plus 6. All those words! Just the itty bitty math. Math is better. So the numerator is increased by 6. The fraction increases by 1. So the numerator is going up by 6. That means the denominator has stayed the same. And the value of this is one more than the original fraction. The original fraction is just n over d. And the new fraction is just one more than the old one. So the new fraction minus the old fraction is 1. Now we have an equation, but it's got variables in the denominator. And that, that makes me nervous. So what I usually like to do when I have variables in the denominator like this, I can multiply through by the denominator here. Because I know the denominator is not 0. because you can't divide by zero. Aren't many rules in math, but no dividing by zero. That's one of them. Here, we'll multiply both sides of this equation by d, so we can get d out of the denominator. So when we multiply this by d, the d's will cancel, and we'll just be left with n plus 6. Multiply this by d, we just get n. And that's an equation we know how to handle, because the n's just cancel. And now we know that the denominator of the original fraction is 6. So we're already halfway there. All we have to do is figure out what n is, and we'll be done. 
So let's move on to the next sentence. The denominator of the original fraction is increased by 36. Well, we know that it was 6, so now we're making the denominator 36 more. That's 42, and that gives us a new fraction of n over 42 because we're not changing the numerator this time. The value of the original fraction will decrease by 1. That means that this is 1 less than the original fraction. The original fraction is n over d. We know d is 6. So note the original fraction is 1 more than n over 42. And now we have an equation we know how to, we know how to handle. We multiply both sides of this by 42, again, to get rid of those icky fractions. When we multiply this by 42, 42 divided by 6, that's 7. We have 7n minus, we multiply this by 42, we just get n equals 42. 7n minus n, that's 6n, 6n equals 42. That tells us that n is 7. So we have n is 7, d is 6, and our original fraction is 7 sixths. And we are ready to move on to the last problem. Oh boy, more words. Let's see if we can turn these into math. Urn contains marbles of four colors, red, yellow, blue, green. Uh-oh, that looks like four variables. All but 45 of the marbles are red. How do we turn that into a sentence? All but 45 of the marbles. Oh boy, what does that mean? Um, well, R red, that's easy. We'll use R for red. And we'll say red is all but 45. I don't know how to write that. I'm just going to use a new variable. A. A for all. Minus 45. Okay. Red are all but 45. Okay, that's one good equation. Let's see. All but 45 are yellow. We can do the same thing here with yellow. Y is yellow. All but 45 are blue. Blue is all but 45, and all but 60 are green. So green is all but 60. Um, now what? Uh, I've got four equations and five variables. Uh, what do I do? Well, we have to remember what the variables mean. R is red, Y is yellow, B is blue, G is green, A is all. A is all of them. That's red plus yellow plus blue plus green. Now I have five equations and five variables. Red, yellow, blue, and green. I know what each of these is in terms of A. I can substitute all these down here. I add up all of these, I get A. So when I add all of these, I'll have four A's, and then I just add these four numbers, 45 and 45 is 90. 90 and 60 is 150, 150 and 45 is 195. So now I have an equation, A equals 4A minus 195, and that's an equation we know how to solve. We add 195 to both sides, we subtract A, and we end up with 3A equals 195. So A, A is 65, we just divide by 3. Now, very important at the end, read the question. You write down 65 as the answer to this problem, Wrong. Question asks, how many of the marbles are green? We now know that A is 65. We just put that right in here, and we get G is 5, and we're done. So now we've learned this very important skill, how to turn words into math. And it's very important that you learn how to do this, because I can trick you with words. I can tell you all kinds of stories with words. But if you know what you're doing, it's going to be very hard for me to fool you with math.